everybody, and welcome to Championship Week here on Stars and Strikes Doubles. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. We're at the Londonderry Bowling Center here in Londonderry, New Hampshire, and we begin Championship Week with our last doubles championship match of the year. And uh, the excitement has been growing the last few weeks because Bill Coffold and Bob Mazur have gotten from number five all the way to this top spot. And the question is where they can continue to go. They had a, Their best week was the first week, over 400. The last two weeks were a little subpar, but enough to win. And this week, I think they're going to have to be close to that 400 mark to beat this team. All right, let's meet the two teams. First of all, they have won three matches in a row. They began this series as the number five seeds. They were the last two bowlers to qualify in the final roll-off held in Newport. From Milford, New Hampshire, Bob uh, Bill Coffold and his partner from Dover, New Hampshire, Bob Mazur. Okay, Billy comes in averaging 125, roll-off score at 621. Bob Mazur's at 123 and 619. You'd think after all this time that I'd have the names in hometown straight. But they've won three matches in a row. Last week, of course, they came up with a 392 to beat Gary Carrington and Mike Sargent. And now they try to run the table and get into the Tournament of Champions. But to do so, they will have to knock off our number one seeded team from Haverhill, Massachusetts, Chris Sargent, and his partner from Claremont, New Hampshire, Steve Vadney. Okay, Chris comes in averaging 130. His roll-off score, the highest roll-off score of all the men, 677. Steve Vadney is averaging 126. And his roll-off score is 663. All right, $400 to the runner-up team today, $800 to the winning team. But more importantly, the winning team and their winning score moves into the ladder of the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions, which begins about five weeks from now. Also, we're going to be telling you a little bit more during the hour about our skins format, which begins next week. But we're going to take a quick break and come back and start our championship match after these messages. Championship week, doubles competition. We'll get it started right after this. All right, here we go with our championship match. Very easy. Number one against number five. Bill Coffold and Bob Mazur have come all the way up from the bottom, knocking off the teams of Barassa and Lipke, Ashline and Blaine, and Carrington and Mike Sargent. And so now they will take on Chris Sargent and Steve Vadney in the championship. They've beaten uh, the father. Now let's see if they can beat the son. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bill Coffold to lead off the match. Last few weeks, uh, Bill has started off, and he started off with a mark, a strike or a spare. And there's another one. This week will be no different. Boy, I hope everybody had a chance to tune in to our singles semifinal then last Sunday. That was a great match, wasn't it? Tim Lipke and Jack Quinn. How about the two matches that Tim Lipke has been involved in in this four-week period? <laughs> the match. Uh, that he was involved in here in doubles, he and his partner Rick Barassa going down to the final ball, and then the same way in uh, singles. Everybody's going to be lining up. Can I bowl Lipke? <laughs> Why do you want to do that? Well, it doesn't matter what he hits, he still loses. So if he bowls big, I'll bowl bigger. <laughs> yeah, both 400 matches and lose, but some great bowling, especially the match between uh, Jackie Quinn and as Jackie was down 40 some pins at one time and came back and just a great match. Now remember that tomorrow it'll be our singles championship match. Jack Quinn will try and take advantage of that big win last week as he will take on our number one seed Paul Berger who has never lost in a regular season match here on Stars and Strikes. So that'll be tomorrow at noon Jack Quinn against Paul Berger. You're looking at Chris Sargent. Mike's son. Chris starts with a six box. Chris back on the head pin, and he'll shoot at a spare leave this time, the triangle. And that being the three, five, and six. No, not quite. <laughs> Ten box this time. Mike, the father, was telling me that, uh, I forget who said it to him in the last roll-off, though, his son Chris threw 150-something to 
to pass him in the roll off and someone yelled over Mike you're no Chris is no longer your son it's you're you're Chris's father <laughs> <laughs> passing of the torch <laughs> Great spare there by Bob Mazur after a five fill on the previous spare. Watch this shot. Well, I guess also uh, before last week's match, Chris was trying to pull the old psychological game on his father and try and tell him he was hurt and Gary was hurt and so forth. Gary, Mike Sarge's partner last week. And <laughs> Mike finally said, hey, Chris, I've been doing this for 30 years. <laughs> There's nothing you can say. <laughs> Two big spares for Bob Mazur, four in a row for Coffold and Mazur to start the match. Here's Steve Badney. And this is his 50th appearance on Stars and Strikes. Well, Steve, uh what did you do in your 50th appearance with your first ball? Well, I threw it down and I left the three, the four, and the nine. <laughs> did you make it? <laughs> Almost. <laughs> yeah, but 10 years from now I say, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Two balls, I made it. <laughs> sure. Well, a very quick 25-pin lead for Coffold and Mazur. Off target to Steve, uh, for Steve Adney to the left. And as you said, very quickly, Coffold Mazur building up a big lead. And it's a nine. It's 35 now through four. 61 for Billy Coffold plus this ball. Well, the team of Coffold and Mazur, their first three weeks here, they are averaging 129 per game. And that's going to win most matches in this format because the scores tend to be a little bit lower on average. So 129, of course, is 387 for three, and that's pretty good. There it goes. Oh, yes. There it goes. Five in a row now. Could this be a repeat of... Ed Jeroleman and Brian Fuller when these guys come all the way up from the bottom and then save their best score for last? As we mentioned that a couple weeks ago, and then they went into a tailspin the next game. But it certainly is looking like that. Some good scores, other scores. Teams uh, just faltered when they gave them a chance to get back in. And this week, they're just opening up quick with five marks in a row. That'll break the string of marks. However, they're already at 82, make it 91, make it 91 mm -hmm. through six. A nine box there. The ball dipping down into the channel. Come on, buddy. Clipping that piece of wood. Out of play. Chris Sargent again. Chris just sliding by the head pin. One, the three, and the ten. Piece of wood in between the three and the ten. So looking for their first mark. No. Chris and his wife, Jean Marie, live in Haverhill. They have a two-year-old son, Patrick. Chris works at the Golden Hill School, does a lot of his bowling at the Exeter Lanes. That is a ten box. 37-pin lead after five boxes. Some color over that sheet. Let's go. Right through the center that time. All right, show us a shot here, Chris. Probably the toughest part about this bowling on television situation. Dan is right now because for the team of Sargent and Vadney, they waited all this time because they were the top two seeds. And now here they have rolled six boxes and they're already down by 38 pins and the tendency is to just kind of feel down a little bit. And oh boy, what do we do now? And it's been proven before, there is plenty of time to come back. And right now, 
First thing on their mind now is getting that first mark and get over that hurdle and then maybe get a break or two, get a couple more marks and who knows, but uh, you have a tendency to start to press now, especially when this is happening. That's six marks out of seven boxes. The fills haven't been spectacular, but the marks are there. That's six. You would think they're due to have a big fill on one. Not this time. Half whistle left. Playing it inside. Oh, look out. There's another one. <laughs> well, you said the fills haven't been good, but the marks are still there. That's seven out of eight now. Playing the half whister inside. Perfect. Meanwhile, Chris Sargent and Steve Vadney still looking for their first mark. And if that one, the four pin should fall, they might get a strike, but he's going to have the triangle, four, seven, eight, piece of wood in between. Oh. Yes. Yeah. There it is, number one. From behind him, I look like he dropped that ball, but he was right on the target. And as you said, their first mark. By the way, we didn't get a chance to mention at the end of last week's show, but I was wrong in my prediction. We did not have any double strikes last week. I really thought we would. The way those four guys were throwing at the beginning of the match. Really didn't have that many strikes. Well, we did have seven strikes last week, but no doubles. Three and ten for Steve Adney. Eight on a spare, trying to make it two. Ball bounced a little bit on him and didn't hold the line. But the first mark is in the book, at any rate. Well, let's see if we can see another shot from the team of Coffold and Mazer. Would straighten out a little bit for him. Someone wanted to roll too deep, though. Right now, the problem is going to be finding a way to get the eight pin. I think that may be the problem of the three. No, oh, got no it. problem at all. And that is eight marks out of nine boxes now. The sole open was the six frame. We've had fills of eight, five, eight, five, six, two, and seven. And a strike. No, oh, not quite. Boy. I Could thought you were right. Eight, and this time the eight and ten pins, but a piece of two pieces of wood. It's going to go after the red line in front of the ten pin, and hopefully he'll get enough of that second piece of wood to knock the eight. No, it's too high. Another outstanding game, though, for Coffold and Mazur as they make an early statement here, trying for four in a row, a 147 with eight spares. Five in a row to start, and then three in a row toward the end. Chris Sargent needs a mark here in the final two just to hold the lead under 40. Skip that one down there. Yeah, actually drop that one right on the foul line. Trying to snap it, it won't happen. Well, again, this is that situation we were talking about for Sergeant and Vadney. Just try to collect themselves during the break and forget about this first game and try and maybe cut the lead in half in the next game. I'd like something positive to happen this final frame. Some kind of a mark with a good fill. Give them something to build on going in the second game. Now well, there'll be a shot at a mark here, the two pin. Right the place, right the place, Remains. Chris Sargent had the number one roll-off score in this series, 677. And he does mark in the 10th. That is his first mark. Second for the team. And the fill is just three. 114. I uh, make it 104. I beg your pardon. 104 
is the total for Sargent and Vadney. 147 for Coffold and Mazur. They have the early advantage here. Championship week continues on Stars and Strikes doubles with game two after these words. But first of all, Dan, a look at the teams that have already qualified in the Tri-State Megabucks Doubles Tournament of Champions. Now, the interesting thing about this, um, real briefly, is that of these five teams that have qualified, two of them qualified as number one seeds. That would be Maffeo and Arsenal and Mayo and Richardson. They both came out of their series as number one seeds. Two teams, Kelly and Valcourt, O'Brien and Denon, both came in as number two seeds, so they had to win two matches in order to advance to the Tournament of Champions. Jeroleman and Fuller began as the number four seed, and they had to win four matches. But as you see, it doesn't matter when you get into the Tournament of Champions. You bowl the big score at the right time, and it can work in your favor. Right now, they are the number one seed in the Tournament of Champions. Of course, that could change depending on today's outcome, but the worst they could be is the number two seed. Come on, Steve. No one team could fall any more than one position based on what happens today. So after this game, we can uh, kind of set up where or what the possibilities are. I would That's right. definitely think those bottom two scores would be in jeopardy regardless, 341, 347, but you never know. I mean, obviously, those bowlers hit those scores in a championship week, so. Steve Vadney leading it off here in the middle game and the team needing something for a jump start here. And maybe that is it. Strike in the second. First strike of the match for either team. Important thing there is he's put one up for his part and Chris Sargent has, is known as a strike bowler. He can throw strikes. So uh, a double course that would cut half that lead. Of course Bob Mazur and Bill Koffel just keep rolling along. That's right. Show you they don't need spare uh, strikes. They've, they can get spares. There's another one. Yep. That is nine spares in 11 boxes. <laughs> Off target with the first ball that time. Just six. I'm sure they're beginning to talk among themselves to look, we gotta start filling these marks. And you have to be careful not to start pressing on the marks, looking for the bad fill rather than looking for the good one. And that time he looked like he pushed the ball a little bit, missed the head pin to the left, just six on it and a nine. So that's 25. And you heard it from the crowd. Come on, double up, Chris. And that's what they're looking for. Anytime you have one strike up there, you're always looking for that second. really uh, dropped that one again. Just releasing it a hair too soon. He wants to carry it out over the foul line. Get it out in the lane a little further. And again, and it cost him just five on the strike. And a six, so it's just 21 pins in those two frames with a strike five, six. The Tri-State Megabucks Doubles Tournament of Champions, which will include one of these two teams, begins on Saturday, April the 23rd, here on the Winds of New England. The singles tournament begins on Sunday, April the 24th, same weekend, and runs for five weeks. Big nine pin drop by Chris that time. That time he did, never heard the ball hit the lane. And again, spare in the fourth. So if you want to begin to uh, mark your calendar to make sure that you don't miss any of the action of the Tri-State Megabuck, Tri Megabucks Singles and Doubles Tournament of Champions, they will begin the weekend of April the 23rd and 24th. Saturday the 23rd for doubles, Sunday the 24th for singles. And don't forget, starting next Saturday and running for four weeks here on Stars and Strikes Doubles, we'll have a special four-week series before the Tournament of Champions, Candlepin Skins. Completely different format. <laughs> Excellent try by Billy Coffold on the three, six, and seven. A piece of wood come flying over, just missed the six. We'll explain the Candlepin Skins format in more detail next week as we take another look at that near spare by Bill Coffold. 
but just to briefly explain, four bowlers will be here each week for the four weeks of the series. So it'll be the same number of bowlers as for doubles, but they will be competing individually. Four bowlers competing individually. They'll roll two games in the hour. The total pinfall of the two games will determine which bowlers come back the following week. The top two finishers in total pinfall in the two games will return the following week. But aside from that to watch out for, there will also be Skins prize money to watch out for. And we'll start to explain that after we take this time out with Coffold and Mazer in the lead. Championship week continues. strike on the spare. Yeah. Second ball in a row that Steve Vadney has thrown a strike. And this time they got the full benefit of it being on a spare. That immediately knocks 10 pins off the lead, which is dropped now to 38. Missed target that time. Seven fell on the strike. And a seven box. Picking up on our explanation of the skins game, which begins next week. In addition to the total pinfall, which will determine the two bowlers that return each week, there will be a separate competition going on involving cash. Having the highest or second highest total pinfall doesn't necessarily mean that you'll win the most money. You will come back, but it doesn't necessarily mean you'll win the most money. Those of you familiar with the Skins Game Golf format, you'll be very familiar with what we're going to do. For those of you who are not familiar with it, briefly I'll just tell you that each of the boxes, one through ten in each of the games, will be worth a dollar amount. As Bob Mazur fills his spare with eight. Specifically, the first three boxes in each game will be worth $10. The next three will be worth $20. The next three will be worth $30 each. Bob makes it two in a row. And the tenth box in each game will be worth $50. If one of the four bowlers wins a box outright, they'll be competing one box at a time, of course. If a bowler wins a box outright, he wins the money value attached for that box. If two or more bowlers tie for the best score in a box, then the money carries over to the next box, and so on. So you can have multiple carryovers, so you could have a lot of money riding on one box, which is a different kind of a format than pretty much everybody that would be here to bowl in this format would be used to. I don't know if uh, there have been many previous competitions where you'd have a lot of money riding on one box, unless, of course, it's the last box of a match. Off a tournament or something like that. But other than that, it's uh, it's going to be interesting to watch the bowlers because, for example, if Doug and I were bowling with, uh, let's say, uh, Chris and Steve Vadney, and and I threw a seven and and uh, Doug threw an eight, and then Steve Vadney got up and threw a spare, well, Doug and I are rooting for Chris to get a spare, too, to That's tie right. the box. That's right. So we have another shot at winning the money the next box. So uh, it's going to be interesting. Chris and Steve have managed to warm things up a little bit here in the second game, but not enough to put a dent in the lead. Well, and uh, Billy Coffold and Bob Mazer, or particularly Bob Mazer, come back with two spares last time up. Now Billy will fill that second spare and try to keep the streak alive. Leading now by 42. Oh, boy. Mm. Done that three weeks in a row. <laughs> That must be an it, omen it, for them. And you know, they're gonna if they go on to win this match and win <laughs> four in a row, people will forget about them win four in a row. They say, oh yeah, you're the two guys that went spare one three weeks in a row. <laughs> 82 in the seventh. The trick to this is when you have a big lead like this and Coffold and Mazur, as you see, still lead by 42 now with less than half of the match remaining is when do you stop worrying about winning the match and start scoreboard watching? 
because they still have the potential to get a, a high triple here if they were to catch fire again in the third game. And Steve Adney and uh, Chris Sargent have the ability to throw 180 at you, as you see. So you never know. Oh boy, by the single. You, you can't go on the defense. I play little games with yourself saying, I need another mark, at least one more. And then when you get that one, at least one more. You keep pressing all the time until it's mathematically over. Well, Sergeant and Vadney had 66 through five, but they've had only 23 pins in the last two boxes. And there is a hard nine drop. Oh, boy. <laughs> I don't know how the seven put stood up, but it did. These, these are almost must shots now. You can't go in 40 pins behind and expect to pull it out in one game. Not that it can't be done, but there's a spare in the ninth. Well, and even still, uh, Chris and Steve would, if they should not be able to come back and win this match, they would probably look at this game as the opportunity they had to get back in it. It's a, a rare down game, really, for Coffold and Mazer. And they've not fully been able to take advantage of it, although Steve throws the strike on the spare. Boy, how close was that to a double? A rocking seven pin away from a double strike, which could have changed things a lot. Yeah, these guys aren't going to quit. I mean, you got to beat them. You can't just say, well, I got the lead and just ride it out. Full on the head pin that time. Four, seven, and ten pins. And it'll be an eight for a 127. And if nothing else, that will force Bob Mazur to throw two marks in order to preserve the lead as it was around 40. Oh, oh boy. Big break there. Look oh, out. A huge break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when everything's going your way, you seem well, to get those breaks. That started out as pretty much an unmakeable shot, and now it's an easy spare. Spare number 12 for Coffold and Mazur. They do not have a strike in the match. Oh boy, right back in the pocket. Nine pin drop, just the five pin. Two choices here, the wood to the left is good. I would, I would assume it would be, and he has a clear shot at the five, although if he shoots at the five, you don't want to cap it. He's gonna take the wood. Smart choice. Well, a seven fill here, and Coffold and Mazur don't lose any of their lead. It's just what he had to do is put two marks up to try to neutralize the spare strike that Steve Vadney put up. That's exactly what he's going to do. Back on the head pin. And seven exactly. Seven. 127 for each team in game two. So the lead is at. When it ain't broke, don't fix it. Bill Koffel will lead off. <laughs> That's right. And at 274, we were talking during the break. Uh, that certainly. Uh, would think the bottom two definitely are are going to be out. Um, the third place with Kelly and Valcourt at 381 definitely in jeopardy, and I wouldn't count the 405 of uh, being a shoe in for second. So interesting to see. And now it's assuming that Coffold and Mazer win this match. If Steve Adney and Chris Sargent come back to win this match, uh, you're going to see one heck of a game between those two guys. <laughs> That's going to be a big game. Well, it would take a 131, 132, actually, for them to beat the 405 of Maffeo and Arsenal. It would take a huge game, 156, 157, to take over the number one spot. They rolled a 156, remember, in their first week. So it's not out of the question. Three and that, by the way, that 156 came with no marks in the last three boxes. 3647. Oh, did it fall oh. right? Almost. <laughs> Almost. A reminder, by the way, that if uh, the winning team today should throw a score that matches exactly any of the previous five scores, we would have a one-string roll-off prior to the show that is affected to uh, settle the tie. 
So if, for instance, uh, the winning team today were to tie Maffeo and Arsenal with that 4.05, those two teams would have a one-game roll-off to settle the tie. Steve Vadney now. The team of Sergeant Vadney changing the order here, giving Steve the extra two. Hoping probably more than anything that a change of order will change the luck here. Well, Steve had thrown a couple strikes that second game in a spare. He was on the head pin that ball, but they really need strikes. I'm sure every first ball that they throw, they're thinking strike rather than a spare leave. An eight drop, not the best eight drop in the world, but the three and the seven could go. Uh, you'd like to have that wood froze up against the three pin, but it's got to play it on the inside. I don't know if you can get enough of that wood to go down the, no, mm. well, never know. So that leaves eight frames remaining now. We talked about how difficult it is to be in the lead like this in the championship match, and when do you stop worrying about winning and start worrying about the final score? The same problem really applies to us. <laughs> we don't want to count anybody out, but That's on the right. other hand, you can't help but look and try and figure what the final score might be. Well, he's one better than his partner. He's going to shoot at the 3-4-7 instead of 3-6-4-7. Still going to have to play the three pin. Twenty-nine now through three. Still looking, both teams looking for the first mark in this final game. Don't forget our singles championship match tomorrow. Jack Quinn against Paul Berger. How about that, Jackie Quinn? The last two weeks, been more than 40 pins down in two matches and come back to win. But of course, the uh, the highlight of that series was last week's match against Tim Lipke and himself. Just two, uh, two thoroughbreds going at it. Boy. And don't forget that after that match tomorrow, the following four Sundays, we have one more regular season series to go in singles to get our sixth qualifier for the singles tournament of champions. That'll be going on uh, the same weekends as our skin series here on Saturdays at noon. And that again begins next Saturday. Be sure and tune in for that. I, I think you'll enjoy it. It's a different format. It's something that's never been tried here in the States. It's been done up in Canada, and of course, you're familiar with it in golf. But I think you'll enjoy it. I think the bowlers will enjoy it, too. It'll be different strategies, as you said, uh, a whole different thing. And we welcome your comments on it, too. Absolutely. As you say, you may be rooting for someone in one box and against <laughs> that same person in the next that's box. That's right. People don't realize, but the possibility certainly exists of somebody throwing a 150 game, winning the game outright as far as the score goes, but not winning any skins because they're unlucky to get a spare or strike when somebody else did. Right. That's going to be interesting. Well, Sergeant and Vadney starting out with four mark free boxes, and Coffold and Mazer left the door open, but Chris and Steve have not been able to do anything. A six box. And the lead now at 48 with six boxes to go. We'll be back to wrap it up here on the championship match. See if Coffold and Mazer can string it on out. We'll return. Coffold and Bob Mazer. There's what they've done today. No strikes. But they've made some spares. And they've made them count. And there's the strike. Well, they had six in their first match. Six strikes, including two doubles. They had only one strike two weeks ago. Last week they had three. And there's the first one this week. Oof. I was gonna say that uh, should have relaxed them a little bit, but maybe a little bit too much. It was tough getting the first mark up there in any game. Trying to improve their seating in the Tournament of Champions if they can, and it's only three on the strike.
Good escape with the eight box. Come on, Steve. Look at the shots. Look at the shot. Steve Vadney. I do say they'd have to mark out now, but it's not beyond their ability, that's for sure. Four pin for Steve Vadney. Spare it up in the fifth. Steve Vadney re racking on lane 29 because the nine pin was missing. Although they could probably take the break at this point. <laughs> that was the eighth mark for Vadney and Sargent. Looking to string some together. Seven fill. Can't get that extra pin now. Three six and the four pin. Not quite. And a nine. So all even in this game. 43 pins the lead. Been that way since the end of game one. And now you got to start looking ahead toward that final score a little bit. Magic number for them really is a 108. That would move them up one spot. And they'll need two marks to get a 108. That's right. Now it could be one big mark if they were to pin out successfully, but. But there is a mark right there in the seventh for Bob Mazur, mark number 15 for the team. This ball should really tell you about the next next ladder up and an eight pin drop. We like to convert this and he's got a got a shot the way the wood is angled there right and then the V wood to the right should take the 10. The other two probably will take the seven. No, he's a little high. No, got not it. to carry it. So they're still alive. So Bob Mazur puts up marks in his final two. That should assure them unless something really drastic happens should assure them of of beating Bob. Bob Kelly and Larry, Larry Valcourt, right at 381. In fact, I would say that unless uh, unless Bill Koffel comes up with a couple of strikes, probably their position is locked in at that number three spot because I don't think they'll be able to get enough to get up to 405. They need a 131 to get there, and that'll take a lot. And that'll be a nine box for Chris Sargent. Now, next ball will tell. If you were to throw a nine or a strike on that spear, they'd have a shot then. That's true. The uh, a, a big first ball and then two more marks would right. do it. But certainly, uh, they'll be beating the 381 score. Right. Barring a complete disaster, kind of like what's been happening to Chris and Steve. <laughs> yeah. Well, they started slowly. They went markless the first six boxes of the match, and they watched Koffeld and Mazer roll up five in a row to start the match and build up a big early lead, and that's really been the difference. Things really haven't changed much since then. It's been pretty much even since then. It was a 37-pin lead in the uh, very first five boxes of this match, and it is still a 37, or still a 40-plus pin lead, and we'll have... We'll have uh, the match continue on lane 29 here as we have a mechanical problem on lane 30. So we'll have Bill Koffold and Steve Vadney finish it out on 29. First ball important here for Bill Koffold and it is seven. And not an easy leave, three, six and seven. By the way, that spare ball, that fill ball there, the seven drop, mathematically eliminates Sergeant and Vadney. So this championship has been won for Koffold and Mazer. What a story. It's going to say a double strike. They still had a shot at the 405, but that'll do it. And they will be seated third. Spare 
on the 10th. So it's 113. 387 plus a ball. Well, how about this? The two teams that came from the bottom of the ladder are going to be two of the top three seeded teams in the Tournament of Champions. A terrific story, a great run for Koffold and Mazur. The six fill, a 119 with 17 marks and a 393. Good enough for that third seed right now. Steve Vadney, final two. No, oh, of course, now. <laughs> of course. Mark number nine. And it was a great shot, but <laughs> Steve kind of throws up his hands. That, that yeah. ball exploded on him, even That's though he missed the head pin. <laughs> <laughs> Pins almost no. Well, this match is over. Let's let's tease him a little bit. There's sure. another mark. <laughs> Everybody fall down now. <laughs> Someone said you're only as good as your last ball. This will be it for Steve Vadney, the last ball of the match. Could probably be a strike. Not no, quite. Not a bad hit, but just a five drop. 109 is the total, a 340 for Chris Sargent and Steve Vadney. Koffold and Mazur have run the table four wins in a row, and they advance to the Tri-State Megabucks Doubles Tournament of Champions. We'll hand out the prize money and talk a little bit more about tomorrow's championship match and about next week's skins game after these words. Done it. They have won four matches in a row to become the second team this year to do that and to advance to the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. We'll talk to them in just a moment, but first of all, our runners up, let's call up Steve Vadney and Chris Sargent because we have uh, $400 in prize money to pass out uh, to split between the two of you. And uh, boy, you know, coming in as the, as the number one seed doesn't always mean good things. And when you have a team that's as hot as this one, they, they really hit you with a bomb right at the start. I bowled horrible today. I couldn't <laughs> help Steve at all. It's tough when one guy can't bowl that good today. So. Well, it's tough, too, when, I mean, they, they obviously were hot. They were feeling very confident, Steve, and they come in and they throw five marks in a row right off the top. That makes it tough. Oh, yeah. I guess Chris and I should have bowled about three games prior to meeting them just to get warmed <laughs> up, you know. But, uh, you know, to come from the bottom all the way to the top is, is a good feat for them. Well, congratulations to you, too, Steve. Uh, this being your 50th appearance on Stars and Strikes, you're still the all-time leader. and uh, almost, as, almost as old as Dan. Almost. <laughs> yeah, but you'll never catch up. Just think of that. That's really right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and, Chris, for you, uh, on the other end, still very early, and you're 22 years old. Is that right? 23. 23 now. Okay. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Uh, I know you were probably looking forward to bowling against your dad, but... He didn't come through for you last week, so. No, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. Congratulations. Good to see you again, and uh, we hope to see you guys soon. Thanks very much. And now let's bring up our champions, Bill Koffold and Bob Mazur. Four wins in a row, and uh, the big checks, $400 each. First place prize money. Congratulations. Terrific job. And, uh, boy, I, you might have saved your best start for last, uh, coming out and hitting them with five marks there right in a row like that at the start. Oh, we did. You know, we felt that the pressure really was on those guys because we've just been bowling all day. We made it to the championship match. And, uh, you know, we made a couple mistakes, but none of them hurt us. So... Uh so we did it. Now, I, I also want to ask you about one other thing. I think that you guys set an unofficial record here on the show. I mean, you did the four wins in a row, which not many teams have done. But you also won three matches in a row while having a spare one each week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Gee, thanks. You don't, you don't try for those. I mean, yeah. But it's, it's something to be able to overcome them and win anyway, right? Well, I think today, for me, the biggest thing about this these last group of shows is when I've been here before and thrown back bad boxes mm -hmm. I've thrown another bad box after it yep. today I didn't I was picking up marks and it and it's I didn't lose any of my concentration or right. my confidence the whole four weeks and I think that made the biggest difference well, I think that was probably true for both of you right yeah definitely definitely yep. we, we felt good the whole time so well you moved into the uh, number three spot uh, as far as the seating for the tournament of champions so we'll be seeing you then
Thanks, Good luck, and uh, we'll talk to you during the tournament. Thanks very much, guys. Congratulations. And now here is the first look at the final seedings for the Tri-State Megabucks Doubles Tournament of Champions. As we just mentioned, Bill Coffold and Bob Mazur move into that third spot with the 393 today. And by the way, for the four weeks they were here, Bill and Bob averaged 129 per game for the four weeks. Uh, Ed Jorlman and Brian Fuller, who also had a terrific average for the four weeks they were here, hold on to that number one spot. They did that way back in October, and it holds up for the entire year. You see the rest of the teams. So uh, five weeks from today, when we begin the doubles tournament of champions, the first match will feature Tom O'Brien and Wayne Denon bowling against Stan Mayo and Scott Richardson. And uh, Steve Vadden, if, if he had my age in pins, he probably would have won the match, but <laughs> he didn't. He's not listening to that, so... He forgets that the microphone's in front of me. I can. <laughs> <laughs> and you never bowl badly when you have the microphone, right? Absolutely not. I haven't missed a shot from behind there. That's uh, great. Congratulations to those two, two fellows. It's a great addition to the Tournament of Champions, and I'm looking forward to it. Well, let's talk a little bit while we have a second about next week, because we've been talking about it for quite some time now. The Skins game, Candlepin Skins, uh, four weeks starting next Saturday uh, here at noon. Um, I guess the only thing I can tell you is that the, the game of bowling is there, and they're giving us the rap sign, two tie, all tie. We want a lot of ties, carry over the money, build the pot up, and uh, uh, it's an individual game next week. And we will uh, go much more into detail on the rules of Candlepin Skins next Saturday, so be sure to join us at 12 noon here on the Winds of New England. And don't forget our singles championship match. That's tomorrow at noon, Jack Quinn against Paul Berger. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole crew, I'm Doug Brown. Have a good weekend, everybody.